there's an interesting conversation to be had, I think, which is what we're going to do this morning, about whether or not you need to do all of the faction quests on your first playthrough of Starfield. I think that there are pros and cons to each. Um, I was inspired to do this because I was jumping in this morning, and there's actually one more faction storyline that I want to do with this character. But for the most part, I'm leaving several of the faction storylines for my next character. And this comes back to my roots in role-playing games and my roots as a tabletop player and and really role-playing my characters. So I don't... For, this is me personally. And, and before anybody says that I'm telling people how to play, I am not. I'm giving you my reasons for the way I do things. You should do it your way. I think that it's totally viable. Everyone play as they want, get what they want out of the game. It's a big, great big game, lots of fun, lots of things to do, lots of ways to play. The reason I'm not choosing to do all of the faction storylines is because I don't feel like they make sense for my character to do so. And I'm going to talk about those as we get into this um, video today. So before we dive in, as I'm loading up the game, um, I would urge you to, uh, if you if you want to avoid spoilers, uh, consider everything from this point forward is spoiler territory, because I am going to be talking about the storyline that I know so far and what I understand of the other faction storylines, so that you sort of get an idea of what those are. Um, and because I'm going to be discussing those, it might spoil it for people who are taking their time with this game. So bear that in mind. Everything from this point forward is spoiler territory. I will be talking story elements. So if you don't want that um, ruined, you might want to consider this the no-go point. But if you don't care or you've already played it and you just want to have a fun conversation, welcome. That's what we're here for. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. So my character is the Space Scoundrel. That was the background that I took when I started this game because I wanted to be sort of like the Malcolm Reynolds in space, the, the Han Solo in space. I am not a combat veteran. I am not a thief per se, although I may do some theft from time to time if I need to, but I'm mostly just a scoundrel, a smuggler, um, a contrabandista, as they say in Spanish. And so it made sense for me to do certain storylines. Um, however, I am not a pirate, so there are other storylines where I went, ooh, no, I don't think I want to do that. So the Constellation storyline, which is the main one here, um, Vasco's looking a little dinged up right there, um, and there's Andreja, who I'm still in the process of wooing. I haven't quite romanced her yet, but she's my active companion. By the way, I love her outfit. Um, the way it's like an over-the-shoulder, um, I don't know what you would call that. It's like a tunic on one side and like a, a onesie on the other. Anyway, uh, let's go out to New Atlantis and I'll take a look at my quest journal um, so we can actually look at the various factions here. So, one of the things that happened to my character early on was I had some contraband on my ship and I got busted flying in to uh, Jemison, essentially, and got busted with contraband, and the UC Sysdef um, caught me and threatened to throw me in jail. Or, they said, I could do these series of quests for them. And essentially what I found out at that point is that it was a... Um, an alternative method of doing the Crimson Fleet storyline. So the Crimson Fleet storyline is this, and this is the spoiler territory. The Crimson Fleet storyline is, do you want to be a pirate? And if you do, join the Crimson Fleet. And the Crimson Fleet has a mission board and they do all sorts of pirate missions. And that's where you want to go if you want to become a space pirate who is a ruthless asshole who kills people and takes their stuff. Um, the murder hobo route, I would I would argue, is what the Crimson Fleet is for. And in the process of doing the UC Sysdef missions, you're actually running all of the Crimson Fleet missions, but you're reporting back to UC Sysdef in exchange for not going to jail. You essentially become their mole. And in the beginning, you're very an unwilling participant because it's essentially jail or this. And so to avoid jail, 
you go do this quest line for them. And um, over the course of that, you get very good at what you're doing, and they eventually call you an agent. And you kind of, at least my character kind of began to be like, you know, Stockholm Syndrome. Hey, I kind of like the UCC stuff, even though I don't like what the UC stands for and the way they treat people. I feel like I'm a valuable part of this organization. And I feel like I'm, since even though I'm a smuggler, I'm against wholesale killing. Therefore, I don't approve of what the U, what the Crimson Fleet is doing. So even though I'm not an ally of the UC or the UC SysDef, I definitely feel like I am doing something valuable for the universe and getting paid at the same time, you know, for the galaxy. So it made sense for me, even though I wasn't necessarily on the side of, you know, the UC, to, to go work with them. Now, had I been a space pirate, I would have said, screw the UC SIF stuff, let's go Crimson Fleet all the way. Now, when I got to the um, Freestar uh, Collective missions, which was for the Freestar Rangers, that was much more of a um, sort of... Definitely a, a, a chaotic good, you know, you're a space marshal, you're a space, you're the space police, but only for the Freestar Collective. And it felt like it was less about being a police agent than it was about helping the little person, helping those in need who really need it. Um, and there is a storyline there um, that you uncover and there are a variety of ways that it can pan out. And it was a very fun storyline, and it made sense for my character to do it, even though I'm not necessarily a law-abiding citizen. For the time that I was in the Freestar space environment, for the, in, the, in their territory, it made sense to do those quests with them, because I'm helping out the little man and getting something out of it along the way. Really cool outfit and a badge. You know, it's no different than any you know, Western you've ever seen where a guy who's not necessarily a good guy ends up getting drafted by the local sheriff to come help out with this problem where like, you know, the, the bad rancher is killing off all the farmers, just take their land and kill off their cattle and, and all this other stuff. So, you know, the bad guy joins the good guys for a brief window of time to help resolve the problem that's affecting everyone. That's how I felt that. Now, when we go to, um, the Ryujin Industries, um, I haven't done this quest line yet, but I've heard that it is a thief-oriented um, storyline. Now, my character is not necessarily a thief, but I think I'm going to go ahead and run the, the, the Ryujin industry storyline because I have some scoundrel abilities, some thief abilities, some pickpock abilities, etc. sneaking around. So I have a feeling I will like that one and run it. However, the Super et Ultra, which is joining the Vanguard of the United Colonies, I will not be doing that storyline with this character. And the reason for that is because the next character that I have planned is a space marine, essentially. He is hook, line, and sinker. He has he has grown up on all of the ideology of the United Colonies. He is a firm believer in their mission statement. And it's kind of like, you know, the guys who go join the United States military. Quick commercial break, everyone, to give a shout out to our first official guild officer, Bubblonia, as well as all of the guild champions, and of course, all of the members who help keep me on the air full time. To join as a member, simply click that join button below and pick your tier, but you can also support with super chats on any live stream or premiere, or super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video. And they hook, line, and sinker fall for every line of recruitment dialogue, and they believe we're fighting the good fight, and yeah, we gotta got gotta get rid of terrorism, and and you know they believe all of the propaganda. So my next character is the space marine who believes all the propaganda and and wants to defend freedom across the galaxy, um, and and he's definitely going to join the UC Vanguard, and he's going to become that character. But I am not running uh, the Super Et Ultra storyline with this character, because I feel like I've pretty much, at this point, with the exception of the uh, Ryujin Industry storyline, I feel like I've kind of reached the end of the road with this character in terms of what I want to see storyline-wise. And... Once I finish up the Ryujin Industry storyline, I'm going to go finish up Constellation, get this character to the new game plus mode, made a hard sa make a hard save, and then I'm going to turn around and make my Space Marine and go through. And I will not do 
Like I won't, I won't be doing the Ryujin Industries quest with my Space Marine. I won't be doing the Free Star Collective with my Space Marine because the Free Stars are against the UC, you know, in the war. I won't be doing Ryujin Industries with that character. It'll just be the Sistef quests and the uh, Super at Ultra quests. Assuming I can even do the Sistef quests, but definitely the 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 UC Vanguard. So I think there's something to be said about how even though there are all of these storylines that you could do in all of these factions, you don't have to do them all with one character. You very much can choose to roleplay your character and pick the ones that you want to work on and save the other ones for a different character where it makes sense. Now, that being said, you can absolutely 100% do all of the storylines with one character and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the others, with the exception of like the Crimson Fleet, because once you've done the Crimson Fleet, if you the way it ends, there's a definite ending to that. But most of these are pretty open where um, there's not any galaxy impacting outcomes at the end of these. It's just sort of, here's a storyline, run it when you're done, cool, move on to the next one. Um, so as far as faction quests go, you could do them all if you want to, or you can do it like me and choose to roleplay your character and pick the ones that you want to work on because it makes sense for this character and that character's background and then save the other ones for the next playthrough uh, both are viable i think they're you know one of, the, one of the beauties of starfield is there's lots of ways to play and much like skyrim and fallout and oblivion and everything else this is a game that's meant to be played over the next 10 years with people doing lots of different playthroughs and choosing lots of different factions for their different playthroughs so that's just the way i'm choosing to do it kind of wanted to put that out there because i've had some questions for people on it figured it was a good time for me to uh talk about the factions in the game and go from there um love to hear your thoughts drop them down below as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I will be finishing up this playthrough over the course of October into November and getting into my Space Marine and going from there. But in the meantime, I've also got to finish up Baldur's Gate 3 and I've got a Cyberpunk playthrough and i got to get all of these done before Rogue Trader drops on December 7th. So stick around for more. Join the Discord if you haven't already done so. Check out the member videos if you are a new member to the channel. And until next time, everybody, stay safe. Happy gaming.